Welcome to everybody's favorite segment, Mailbag. Uh, today's items are from China. Hi to all my Chinese viewers. Let's get started. First one up is this one here from Banggood, but it is not sponsored. I mean, I probably could have just talked to them and they probably would have sent me this anyways. But um, I don't know if you know, but during the pandemic, everything is messed up. Uh, but one thing that is not messed up is uh, Banggood's pricing and shipping. Keep an eye on their flash deals. This is what this was. Um, two items in here, forty-four twenty-eight. And before you think this was really expensive, um, first of all, it was free shipping. Uh, it only took 10 days to arrive here. And these things were cheaper at Banggood than they were on AliExpress, on eBay, on Amazon, anywhere. You just need to keep an eye on Banggood's flash sales. Plus, I mean, these are kind of expensive devices anyways. So these are brushless motors and the inrunner type. I mean, I have a lot of the outrunner type, the kind for helicopters and planes and stuff, but I've been doing a lot more, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot more RC remote control projects. So I need some brushless motors. Uh, these are 3560 uh, size or 3550 size. You can get them 3560 as well for about the same price. That means uh, 35 millimeters across and uh, 50 millimeters uh, long. And uh, basically it's a, I think it's a 540 sized. It's got these banana plugs on the top. And specifically this one here is, oh sorry, it's a 3650 not So it's 36 mils across. Uh, this one's 3100 uh, kV. I actually bought two identical. So the plan is uh, this winter, if I get around to it, this big if, I can't promise anything, um, I want to be building some, you know, snow related RC projects, uh, including an update to the snow speeder. And uh, basically, I'm going to need some brushless motors to take out of one project and pop into another. So it's a good thing to have these in stock uh, for 22 bucks each. That is cheaper than anywhere else uh, with free shipping. So that's pretty good. Um, should we give these things a spin? You know what? We may have to scratch that because I went to get the uh, speed controller. My other speed controller is indisposed at the moment. And these are three and a half mil bananas. Don't know why. These are four mil bananas, which is the standard size. So this will have to get converted to uh, four mil. But yeah, this is a little speed controller. Um, I don't even know if this one will be strong enough for these motors. These motors are pretty powerful. Um, don't remember the wattage, but it's quite a bit. Yeah, that's uh, 900 watts, uh, 56 amps. So I don't think this little speed controller will be enough. I do have an appropriate size speed controller but it's currently in another project. On to the next one. Next one up are these two, and I say two because they're related. Uh, this says M4, M5, M6, 100 pieces each lock nuts. And this just says screws, but I think they're M4 because I'm running out. Uh, this one cost me $6.82. Um, August 23rd ordered, September 22nd arrived. Today is October the 20. 1st, 22nd. So it's been a month since some of these things have arrived here, but you know, stuff is just not coming in. Uh, August 23rd to October 19th on the lock nuts, $23.03. This one's well packaged. It's in uh, foam. But uh, honestly, at this point, I'm slowing down ordering from AliExpress. I think I'm going to order from Banggood until, uh, until the shipping stuff calms down. So what do we got here? These are lock nuts. These are lock nuts. Is that a dead bug? Dead Chinese bug. Neat. And these must be the M4. M4, 5, and 6. Um, this is restocking hardware. I'm basically building a big 3D printer. I'm running out of hardware. M4 10 millimeters. Yeah, this is what I was running out of too. M4 bolts. All right, 
I'll give you a closer look at this stuff. I'm perched a little precariously on top of some boxes here, but uh, let me show you these M6, uh, which means metric six millimeters in diameter, uh, just because they might be just easier to see that they're bigger. So on one side, just regular threads. On the other side, um, it's a piece usually of nylon. That's why they call it nylock. And what happens is when you run your bolt in here, it kind of, the friction heats it up and then when you're done threading it on, it re kind of like fuses in place and acts like a lock washer. But um, yeah, just it's easily removable. You just need tools to do it. Uh, so any wrench or ratchet will let you do that. Um, these things are ridiculously expensive if you have to buy them locally. That's why I buy them before I need them from China with patients to come in. Um, M4 is probably the most likely, M4 and 5 are probably the most likely to that I'm going to use. M6 has kind of like real world um, applications. You know when uh, mechanics, um, they make fun of the, the 10 millimeter socket that goes missing? Well, the 10 millimeter socket goes on a 10 millimeter head, but the shank of that bolt, the, the, the body of that bolt is actually 6 millimeters. And usually it's M6 by 1, which is what these guys are. So one is the thread pitch, so one thread per millimeter. And these are some M4 screws. I like using M4 screws in the 3D printer stuff because it is small enough to fit pretty much everywhere, but also big enough that I can get some reasonable clamping force on it without stripping threads. Um, these are just 10 millimeter length with a hex head on them. I think that's three and a half mil um, Allen or hex. So. Just to show you, um, I was almost done with these. This is my uh, storage solution here. Let me just open it because it's a little close to the camera. All right, so this is how I store my stuff. These are M3. These are M3 by 10, M3 by 8. We got M3 um, uh, plastic washers, M3 uh, metal washers. M3 by 45, I think, M3 by 30, uh, M3 nuts, and M3 lock nuts. Next step up, we have M4. I have M4 uh, lock nuts, a different kind of lock nut. This is um, a type where it's actually squeezed. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a bit oval. Hopefully I'm in focus. I don't think I am, but it's a little bit oval on top. So it actually like it gets squeezed on actually on three sides, one, two, and three. And that means the threads don't fit properly, which means you have to force the screw in. So it actually acts as a lock nut. These are actually used. These are what holds your airbags in on your car. I've been doing recalls at work and you have to throw the old nuts away. But why throw them away when I can just use them for something less critical? Then here I've got some miscellaneous uh, M4s. And this is the last M4 bolt I had left. That's the last one. So this will go into the miscellaneous now. And then these M4 by 10s will go in there. And I will probably put the M4 lock nuts in here too. Um, this is just an M4 nut. So probably in here. But then my M5 stuff is actually not fitting. So I'm probably going to move the M5 stuff over to a different box. Uh, so here's some M5 by 12 or M5 by 15, I think, with the uh, Allen cap head. I've got these M5. These are actually made to go into wood, but I wanted the big flange. You'll, you'll see for what at uh, some point, I hope, and some M5 washers. So, yeah, filling up the, uh, the, the coffers here because when I get to designing, that's not the time to order stuff and wait, uh, you know, three months from, for it to come from China. Next one up are uh, these two. Uh, these were actually sent by Redivis. Uh, Redivis makes um, walkie-talkies, two-way radios. I don't know. I call them walkie-talkies. These are the uh, RT40B. Um, they asked me to take a look at these, and I said, well, why not? I know nothing about um, two-way radios, um, but uh, another maker was talking to me about kind of the genesis of these two-way radios and I think it's going to make for an interesting video. 
So yeah, these, um, they're unboxed because they kind of came without labels. I didn't know what they were, but these are cheap. I think they're $35 Canadian on Redivis's website. I'll link them in the, the description below. I have to work on a review for these, uh, sooner rather than later for whatever reason, uh, Redivis is really in a hurry for their review. I typically don't accept, uh, people that are in a hurry, but since I'm not working, uh, I figured I might have the time to do it. So yeah, look for this review coming soon, but they sent me two of these uh, and I have had them out of the box too. I have been playing with them. They are quite interesting. Uh, they also sent me, they said they sent me gifts, but I think the gifts are just this Woolwart, which I guess you don't get normally because the other one didn't have one. And these bands that I believe go onto the switches. I don't know. Not too fancy. There are some way uh, fancier radios than this, and I think that will figure into the review. Um, but yeah, I got to play with a new toy, and that's going to be part of the review as well. So, just basic radios. Um, come on, 13, like this. They talk. 12, 11, 10. So you change the channels and it talks. Nine, eight, seven. Uh, and yeah, it has. I mean, I don't know anything about eight, radios. Seven. What can I tell you? Uh, it's a radio. <laughs> it works. Uh, and I'll, I will have some cool things to say during the review. But um, don't forget, this is the first set of radios I own, aside from when I was a kid. So the re the review will come from that perspective. It'll be radio versus none, uh, and a little bit of the history of these things. So yeah, hopefully you get subscribed to see that review. Either way, I hope it's going to be entertaining. On to the next one. Last one today is this uh, Beefy Boy. This one is sponsored by Banggood. Um, 113.32, uh, ordered October 9th, arrived on the 22nd. So again, with that relatively fast shipping, especially for free shipping, pretty incredible. So. Uh, I was doing some uh, video work. I don't remember what I was doing specifically, but I needed one of these. In fact, I'm being vague, but I had, I have one of these, which I did not give a glowing review to from Banggood. Uh, and I needed one that could do more power. And that's this. Uh, these have been popping up recently on AliExpress, and Banggood has them for pretty much the same price, but Banggood has free shipping, and it's fast shipping. Yeah, so are these CPU heat sinks? Kind of. Ah, here we go. These all together make up a new electronic load. In fact, it's an electronic load that is modular. So you have one control board, which is in here, which does all the smarts, it has the LCD, it has uh, the, all the, the control circuitry on it. But then instead of being limited by how much you can dissipate through a single MOSFET and a single heatsink, what they did here is they give you these sort of uh, side units and you can bolt them on, Jesus, you can bolt them onto the main unit and expand the amount of wattage. Yeah. So each of these modules, well, th this original module, is capable of 150 watts and each of these additional modules are also capable of 150 watts so in this configuration if you bolt all these together you get yourself a electronic load which can handle 600 watts and that is exactly what I was looking for hey for once it's got the American style plug with the uh, European adapter. Don't, 
don't need that death adapter. So yeah, this is just like the other one that, that Banggood had sent me, except the interface is improved, apparently. It does have a nicer screen. Uh, and it's modular, and so I can bolt these all together and have 600 watts. And the cool thing is you can arrange these kind of however you want. So this one goes like this, and then you kind of bolt these together like this. So you can either make them all in a row or you can make them in this like cross pattern. I haven't quite decided the way I want mine to be set up, but I probably like this. Then you just change a little jumper down here and you get yourself the full 600 watts. So we're going to have to take this for a spin, but first I'm going to bolt all these things together and bring you back. Well, it is now about an hour later, and uh, that's because of two reasons. One, because it's a bit uh, finicky to put, actually it's a lot finicky to put together. And another, because I actually made custom cables for this thing. Let me explain. Um, so going over it, you have to thread five bolts into, you know, one to each of these holes, but you have to do it for each module. So you have to thread 15 bolts in and they don't really line up properly. Like the bolts are all lined up, but the thing is that these PCBs are all bent into kind of like a banana shape. I don't know if you can see that there, sort of, you know, this way. Um, and that's because these, um, these heat sinks are, th these springs are too stiff. They have these uh, strengtheners on the back to stop the PCBs bending, but the PCBs are still bent like crazy. So hopefully none of the traces broke uh, in consequence of that. Another thing is that where these fan connectors are on the end, this is a very weak part of the PCB and this one is actually cracked. So I'm not sure if this, um, if this uh, fan is going to work. I mean, if it doesn't, it's not too bad. I can run tiny little wires uh, because obviously the connectors are broken out everywhere. Um, so I will do that if I need to, but um, first I want to see if the shipping actually damaged it. Uh, another thing is this thing does four wire measurement, which is awesome. Uh, basically, uh, I believe it is, yeah, on the outsides here, that's where you connect your main power draw. And on the insides here, you have these thin wires that go all the way out to uh, the load or the battery or whatever you're doing. And those don't carry any current. They just sense the voltage. So if you've got a voltage drop through your wires, uh, it'll be sensed by these terminals here, which is really good. This thing also comes with a uh, thermistor that you can stick on your battery or wherever you're pulling current from to check the temperature goes into right there. You've got jumpers here you have to set up for depending on how many of these loads you have on. It also comes with this neat little board with USB-C, um, mini and micro and a 2.1 or 2.5 millimeter jack and that just threads right into here and so you can use that as an accessory. I love that they sent me this because that means I can make custom PCBs for custom inputs on this thing if I want to just by measuring these things and so uh, yeah the LCD is here uh, I've already thought of a better way to arrange these but that's not going to happen until the review is done because the review will be done the way it's shipped and then I'll be working on slowly a better arrangement for this well with that being said uh, let me set up the um, I'll set up the Reden uh, RD6018 and we'll pull some current from it and see what this thing reads. In the description they say if you don't care for four wire measurement uh, you can just bridge these two together but it's uh, it's really nice that they didn't just do that. They do give you the option of doing four wire measurements and for that I made these connectors. So these are um, these fork terminals and they have two wires. They have one 14 gauge and one uh, 22 or 24 gauge and they finish in these uh, ferrules and so I can just hook this up kind of like so. I hook that up pretty tightly uh, and then I can put this in over here. Now again the outside is the main current draw 
So I'm just going to shove these in here. And these are number one Phillips terminals. I'm not sure what the fascination is with Phillips screws, uh, especially Americans. They love their Phillips screws. I think the hex is a way better uh, screw head. Uh, if these Phillips here, all these uh, 15 bolts I had to put in, if they were um, hex, it would have been way easier to install. I could always replace them myself, but I mean, just a little thing. I think they cost about the same for the for the company to, to make them, so I think it'd be, it'd be great if they just gave us um, hex instead of Phillips. Okay, they got the sense wires in here. And everything is independent. Whoops. There we go. So everything on here is independent. It has its own power supply. Um, it is a 12 volt, one amp jobby. Uh, that part seems pretty inexpensive. I think if I were to keep this permanently, I would probably get a different power supply for that. Oh, definitely this fan is done. So it did, the fans did a uh, self check here. And it seems one of the fans didn't work. Let's see if I can get it to self check in a way. No. Okay, I need to fix this fan here. Okay, I think I got it, uh, at least temporarily. No, it fell out. Um, I'm, just, I'm just shoving some wires in here. Uh, because I think I'm going to make a full fix for the uh, review. There we go. Okay, so uh, first things first, OLED display and video capture is not fantastic. Um, so you'll have to trust me on this. Um, for the full review, I'll see if I can get a better view of this. For now, this will have to do. But basically, I've got a, a, a display with everything. We got uh, the voltage, the current, the power. I'm actually going to turn this on, see what happens. Okay, so this is 11.98 and this is showing a 12.08 volts. I've got a current limit of 1 amp on the Reedon RD6018 here. Um, it gives me resistance, power, current, energy, uh, capacity. It gives me everything. This thing is awesome. Also, I can put into constant current, constant resistant, constant voltage, constant power. Then this is way better than the other electronic load I got, even if you're just going with the center module, which would do the same amount of discharge. Uh, let's set this to um, one amp and let's see if it turns on. So this fan connector here being borked and shipping, yeah, shipping company's fault maybe the sender's fault for not having um, packaged this up well, but this thing not working, uh, my fault. I actually had the polarity reversed here. So now if I turn this on, it works just fine. So on here, I've got five amps pulled on here, and I have exactly five amps on the Reedon RD6018. All fans are working simply because I jumpered this fan over to the side connectors there. Um, uh, voltage it says 11.98 volts and here I have 11.99 oh this jumped up to 99 so yeah the four wire sensing is working perfectly um, I'm actually really looking forward to doing a full review on this thing but that won't be today this is just getting it started and um, yep uh, there was an idiot between the steering wheel and the driver's seat and uh, that was me that's what uh, stopped this from working. It does work and um, you'll be glad to know there is reverse polarity protection. And so these uh, collections of items make up today's uh, mailbag. You should be seeing um, the reviews for this pretty soon, a repair video for this and maybe the review for this pretty soon as well. Uh, these guys are just gonna get stowed away in my storage stuff. Uh, I might make a storage video like my, you know, storage philosophy uh, for my Patreons, at least uh, super early access for them, probably a month early access. 
And these guys you're going to see uh, soon, I guess, in some RC type things. Um, in fact, I'm going to try to increase the amount of RC things I've been designing in Fusion. Thank you again to my Patreon patrons for letting me buy this stuff. Thanks to the uh, sponsors for sending me stuff. Uh, there's an email in my about page if you're wondering if you can uh, send me stuff for sponsorship. And if you just want to send stuff for uh, poops and laughter, uh, I do have a P.O. box. Other than that, I want to thank you guys all for watching. See you on the next one.